Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, this is my Karnataka Spider Club. This is my club, what it is. So on behalf of this, I'm just uh, presenting my 30 minutes talk on uh, role of spiders in organic farming. Agriculture, what I have taken, yeah. And first of all, the wishes of Guru Purnima. Uh, total, there are 24 gurus has been recognized. So we should learn from those gurus and we should be always respecting them. So though we may have many ideas of guru, according to this, our uh, Indian uh, this thing, uh, the earth, air, sky, water, fire, moon, sun, sea, pigeon, python, moth, like this, so on, 24 gurus is been identified. And in this list, it includes spiders too. So uh, the present topic spider is one, it is from spider, I am being inspired and for the farming, whatever we do from spiders, how it is beneficial, all those things through my guru spiders, I will be explaining you today. So the main objective, I think you all have got the message, what and all the objective we are going to see today. One thing is spiders and its basics. The other thing is the spiders, the notion about spiders, spiders as bio indicator and spiders and its role in agriculture. So uh, my main aim is to cover all these four topics. Hope by the end of 30 minutes, you will get some point and we'll be clarifying it through uh, question and answers. So present situation everywhere. What are the present situation everywhere? You can just check here. One thing is urbanization. So this one is a, a, what I am living in Mysore and Mysore itself for me, it looks uh, so this thing that we have lost the diversity even in Mysore, though we have many diversity, but if you go to the core of the city, we can see this urbanization. So I think if you go for metropolitan cities, you will be seeing these uh, photos. So the for first thing is destroy first. So if you destroy first, so even the kids, what we are thinking is destruction. So everywhere you just destroy, destroy. So, and then end up in monoculture, cultivate monoculture because we need food and for the food security, we advise monoculture. And from that we have, uh, we will be growing all these things. For example, if we grow brinjal, only brinjal will be there. If tomatoes, now it is almost, it has come to five rupees, still grow, everyone grow. When it rains, it hikes. All those things will be having, but the farmer will be dependent on one foot and he will be under loss and this is a monoculture. So my topic is spiders. So forget about spiders, but nothing exists here. When you grow ginger, especially ginger, almost from Kerala in the South Karnataka, everywhere they are growing ginger or even the water level is going down and we are losing the diversity. So for this, these are our tools. So to kill spiders or kill any insects, we have many tools like Roundup or everything. So mainly we don't want any weed because uh, we think the weed is the main enemy for uh, our farming and uh, we will be cutting all those things. So the solution everywhere, uh, even in Mysore, they, have, uh, they destroy after destruction also, even in the concrete uh, roof, they will be uh, putting a banner like go back to nature. So even in urban setup, the main thing is go back to nature. Yes, one way it is right. We have to go back to the nature and it is the present solution for all the problems. So what is the alternative? As I said, go back to the nature is the only alternative we have. So in, in this aspect, after seeing all things, I am welcoming to my farm, Indra Prastha. So Indra Prastha is an organic farm from 40 years. My father, A.P. Chandrasekhar has started and I am just welcoming to Indra Prastha. So this is our form, how it is almost. So it's a, you can just see this one. So it's a canopy based form. So how in uh, forest, if you, you see, um, it is in a canopy one. There are layer by layer it is there. Similarly, it is a canopy based form. It is a mainly coconut is there. And if you see it down, almost uh, though sunlight is approaching coconut, uh, you can't uh, see anything down, almost it is dark means the sunlight will never enter inside. That much canopy is there, but still the yield, uh, yield doesn't uh, uh, come down and that you can, anyone can come to our farm and see that. So I won't explain much there. And 
spider web which is right in front of my house yeah now it is uh, not there if you come to my house now it is not there but still it is there in other places now yeah the my journey of spider started through this stegodiphus sarsenorum or it called as social spider from this spider i was been motivated to study on spiders and to see how these spiders are beneficial for us this one small one web it is just you can't count you can't count uh, if when i move the slide you can't count at all that much amount of pests it will be controlling in a single web and this is just a area of just one uh, square centimeter that much uh, it is holding and that spider has been motivated and web is nothing the spider's web is nothing but an entomology screen so when you put an entomology screen to trap the insects similarly this web traps many insects and it catches so these spiders have come down and they are catching the prey and it is going inside i won't much explain anything much in detail about the individual spiders uh, my main objective is to give a glance of on how the spiders is beneficial and how is spider is an important tool in our nature so this there is a mosquito net and uh, in front of it there is a spider web so the, our mosquito web can uh, uh, protect spiders uh, sorry mosquitoes from entering inside but spider net can kill it too so that is the main thing the mosquito is a spider which a mosquito has been trapped on spider web and you just look at our cow shed this is our cow shed you may feel you may see oh uh, it's not clean very untidy all you may feel but these spider inside the spider what you can see here is called cellar spiders so these are the cellar spider which has made a web and it controls mosquitoes house flies cockroaches all those things is been controlled through its web and we won't clean this spider web in our cow shed and these are the natural uh, what uh, net a real net which can uh, really kill uh, many pests which are entering our cow shed so that our cows are safe from mosquitoes or house flies anything though uh, yeah you may ask the question whether you don't have any mosquitoes inside the spider's cow shed yes of course there are if the spiders were not existing definitely our cows will not be the, this healthy see a single mosquito net uh, single spider web has trapped almost just goes photo you can see how much mosquito it is it has controlled so this much capacity a single spider web has almost it feeds uh, if it feeds uh, so hell amount and i will be explaining how much it feeds in my further slides so it's a capacity of one web a spider called neoscana is feeding on uh, mosquito and mosquito had a very good meal from our cows it has uh, so you can see the blood th through it too so for the beginners there is just i'm giving a glance on what is spiders so many think that spiders are insects but no spiders are definitely not insects spiders are an arthropod belong to order called arenia like this they come in all shapes you can see many number of shapes whatever uh, imaginations you have the those much shapes it has so many shapes are there more than 50000 species of spiders from 120 families till now has been described and it has many number of size from 0.4 mm till 10 cm and if you want to see the basic on spider the can see the body structure spiders have eight legs and insects have six legs that is the ma major difference spider have eight eyes insects have six eyes and whatever the pets whatever we are considering it they are all almost all everything are insects except except the mites which are uh, harming other than that everything are insects other than the, the mites come to the arachnids actually so these are the uh, main body structure now there are many notions about spiders one thing the spiders are very ugly creature but you can just see this photo spiders are actually very beautiful we should have a beautiful mind to recognize the beauty of spiders actually and then loathsum or a useless creature we think no it is not i will be explaining it further dangerous creature if you if a spider bites we will be uh, death all those things are there no in india there are no venomous spiders which are harmful to humans so no it is also false and useless creature no definitely it is not that is the main uh, aim of our today's webinar so that we ca i can prove that spiders are not at all a useless creature 
you can just see a spider called charakanthium which is feeding on a caterpillar you imagine a caterpillar if the caterpillar is if your plant is full up uh, full up of uh, butterfly and moth caterpillars your plant uh, can be dead so these spiders are actually a very good pest controller they are feeding on these caterpillars and making uh, your plant go healthy so let's go back to our form again so this is our form you can see the mulching this is spinach or what we in kannada we call as basale spinach is being grown and complete our uh, uh, coconut uh, husk has been uh, put here for a mulching and in our form you can see nothing is been uh, just burnt or uh, it is uh, been dispatched anything everything you can see the everything is been arranged beautifully it is been arranged all the uh, husk or uh, coconut uh, stem all those thing is been arranged so because if you arrange this uh, arrange like this the moisture will be retained and you, uh, may, and it will be natural manure after one or two years and majorly you will be creating an habitat for many spiders example from family lycosidae or therophosidae that is called tarantulas or jumping spiders or uh, crab spiders many of and even honey bees love, love to come here if a honey bee set up their beehive inside this uh, uh, this thing logs you will be getting uh, you will be having a very good pollinators in your form itself and you can get a good honey too so basically may, may most of the four family of spiders exists here so because of canopy oriented farming we will be having so much of leaf litter so this leaf litter are called tarago what we will call because all these leaf litter will definitely increase the moisture of your farm and so that irrigation purpose uh, irrigation will so will be not at all necessary and majorly most of the, the uh, creatures like centipedes millipedes spiders everyone love to live here and they convert this leaf litter into manure so to make a fertile top soil you need leaf, leaf litter and in the uh, indirectly because of leaf litter you will be definitely having more most of the uh, creatures which are making your leaf converting your leaf litter into manure so this is a one view of our form you can see here uh, letting no sunlight to directly fall because sunlight must be utilized and complete photosynthesis has to happen that is the main purpose so uh, this photo will explain and no need of explaining much further i guess and don't and let the tail, uh, tree fall on itself don't cut the tree if the tree died see example uh, there is a coconut tree which is actually we have not cut it but the coconut tree has created a habitat for owls owls anyway will be controlling the pests rats all those things they owls will be controlling and there will be many micro creatures in this coconut bud so all like spiders millipedes centipedes and other uh, useful insects will be there and these all will be indirectly or directly helping your yield in your form so now the another concept of spider will go spider for water conservation you may think oh, how spider can be used for water conservation what is the role yes if you just see in rainy season or in winter you can see a spider web so spider web instead of catching the prey it has caught the water droplets so many use of so full of water droplets is been stored here and these water droplets will be slowly they will be dropping to your land and they it will and it will be percolating inside and your water table will be definitely increased why i will be explaining further okay one of the best rain water harvesting tool so it is a unnoticed brew, uh, dew collector especially in winter uh, okay in rainy season anyway so much of rain is there this uh, spider web, web may not uh, withhold the uh, weight of the water but during winter when there is no water definitely the, those small water droplets will be collected and that will be slowly percolating to your uh, land there are many noticed pits like this you can see the spider here and there is a small pit which is actually home for the spider so the in a square meter there will be minimum 5 to 6 holes like this and these all are water charging units you just write down they are the water charging units and when the water rushes inside this pit they will be increasing your groundwater level so the these are these are one of the major role of spider in uh, water conservation these are rainwater harvesting pits as i said yeah 
because of all these uh, collectors uh, like uh, these uh, pits uh, all those things our farm indraprastha uh, 14 acres is been fed by open uh, open this thing okay uh, uh, open pond and we don't have bore wells at all so we even in the bay, bay, this thing summer at minimum 25 uh, just in 5 uh, feet will be having water and 25 feet water will be filled in this ponds and we uh, the whole of our uh, 14 acres will be irrigated through this water and if you do this type of create this type of habitat many spiders like fishing spiders wool spiders and tetragnatha the uh, words may sound something strange but the uh, no and uh, neglect those uh, family names of spiders but you will be creating habitat for these type of spiders example you can see these are these are tetragnatha spiders this uh, this loud to be there in the uh, pond side at only okay this is a fishing spider which is actually bit a rare spider which is there in our uh, pond and this is called barmatas pokoki one of the jumping spiders and this is called as partha indica another crab spider so these spiders when you create a habitat these spiders will automatically clearly uh, occupy that space and those spiders will be definitely beneficial will your for your form that will be explained in the further slides so spiders as a soil indicator so to know your soil is healthy there are many indicators but if you consider a spider like a example a spider called odignatha you can see this spider odignatha and there is a spider called trocosa in uh, so you can see this this spider is called trocosa if your soil is fertile definitely this spider will be present or in a other way if this trocosa spider is not there in your land i can bet your spider is unhealthy sorry your land is unhealthy so and no need of doing any soil tests or anything you just observe if this trocosa spider or if this odignatha spider is there in your form no need of testing your soil i can bet your soil is perfect for farming and if this uh, spiders are not existing then you need to give some chemical supplements or anything uh, so you do so we have to create our soil so that these spiders like odignatha or trocosa should exist here and if this spider exists definitely your soil is 100% fit for any type of farming so spider and its role in agriculture one soil indicator just now i have discussed it second rain water harvesting yes it has been discussed so pest management so it is partially discussed so i think most of them are waiting for this uh, from the coming further slide the other initial slides may be boring for someone or it may be interesting i don't know i think the coming slides will be definitely interesting who are who have come here to listen my talk on the agriculture perspective the one thing 800 million ton what is this you uh, the very high, huge number you may think even i can't imagine this much or what is the weight everything yes 800 million ton it is the amount of food a spider in the world feeds on so total how many spiders are there all over the world if they start when they start feeding in a year they will be feeding 800 million ton and in contrary we human will be feeding on 400 million ton of staple food so we spiders are feeding double than us and believe me spiders are not eating like rice or uh, wheat or any uh, meat or anything they are just feeding on very tiny insects and these tiny insects made make a huge amount 800 million ton so in a one acre of organic land minimum there will be 1 lakh spiders and if there are 1 lakh spiders if it feeds on four insects a night or a day then you consider in a day in a in one one acre of land minimum 4 lakh insects will be controlled or one 4 lakh insects uh, pests uh, what we think uh, will be dead and those all amount will make 800 million ton so in one square meter of land as i have said earlier at least six spiders should be there and if six spiders are there then your soil is healthy otherwise definitely your soil is unhealthy so these are the thing Uh, so soil uh, and you can just note it down and only the spiders will say how your land is so now let's take an example of banana farm so this is not my farm our neighboring farm this is how banana is grown just a monoculture when only one shoot is been left or maximum second one later generation will be dead they will be cutting off they will cut off and just throw throw away from their farm and this huge biomass 
is being just thrown out and they will be uh, fired and uh, it will be ash and it will be of no use for your farm or me and actually burden for nature at, uh, nature again this in this banana you can just see in our farm the banana will be grown like this and minimum 1 2 3 4 5 6 all their offspring should be let left alone and they will, if they produce 3 to 4 kg of banana also we are ha happy and fine because uh, in in total the when you, when you are growing one banana and yielding 20 to 25 kg and in the four or five years again if it is giving more than that definitely i am happy for that and these banana leaves are a habitat for many spiders and these spiders will make your banana healthy because uh, recently everyone had uh, um, i think south in uh, south karnataka people and south indian people would have experienced the uh, banana leaf disease where a uh, skipper there is a butterfly called banana skipper which comes and rolls the uh, banana leaf and uh, and after that uh, the banana will be yield will be less and the, everything in our form is controlled by spiders and the spiders like so spiders like piranthus a very rare spider piranthus and spiders like jerzigo also breeds here so these are the very rare record from india which has been documented in our form and i am happy for that because only the banana has banana leaf has made created a habitat and if we leave for the, them many spiders will be grown there and it will directly benefit your form so again we grow paddy for ourselves again it's not an monoculture in our form only in a piece of land we will be growing paddy and mainly mulching is the key though the paddy or a cabbage is grown for our for, uh, home utility and it increases so it increases the spider diversity when mulching is there and all ground spiders will be checking the insects and maintains the moisture and maintains the soil texture and also increases the yield so for convince for your convincing uh, say i will be just showing the greatest tool which is right here in your form if you observe you can see there is a goa here a uh, parallel what we call and there is a spider here you can just see and i will be just showing few photos where you can see how these spiders are feeding on pests so there is a spider called uh, telamonia and there is a spider called chikunia which has already fed on a mosquito so mosquito you know you name the major uh, deadly disease like chikunya dengue or malaria anything it is been caused by a mosquito and and the mosquito mainly it is being checked through uh, spiders and as i said you earlier they feed up to 400 800 million ton every year globally so this is a spider which is wrapping a prey so the spider is not hungry now so what it thinks okay anyway a, 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 this thing an insect has been uh, fall into my web let me wrap it so it has kept wrap and it is like a uh, refrigerator in a spider web if it is been wrapped uh, if an insect is been wrapped like this it is more than our high end refrigerator where this uh, insects will not be uh, it, it will not uh, foul at all because it can be stored up to 2 to 3 months when spider is hungry it comes out and open the lunch box what it has stored and then it starts feeding on so it's a voracious eater and it uh, starts feeding on it and this is a stem borer for arachnid or coconut or any plant this uh, or coffee these stem borer are the biggest pest and this stem borer is been controlled by a spider called hamadrus stem borer are called long horn beetle actually yeah and this, this is the big uh, biggest spider what we see in india called nephila this spider web is here and this spider web actually traps many number of insects like banana skipper what i said banana skipper the disease the same banana skipper butterfly is been trapped here and you can see the nephila spider actually is been feeding and other few spiders which are tiny spider are also having party time here and it is feeding on that uh, spider here so on that uh, butterfly here and there is a grasshopper so grasshopper are the locust the biggest threat uh, i think uh, during the pandemic time corona time we heard about the locust also and one of the uh, what uh, same family actually grasshopper belongs to and it is been trapped in neoscona spider web and neoscona is feeding on this grasshopper and this is a spider called cellar spider folicidae the spider is feeding on one uh, uh, insect and it is been wrapping other insect and this uh, 
these insects are actually the plant hoopers. So these plant hoopers will be uh, feeding on uh, leaf sap and this spider is protecting them. And this spider is called tennis or a wandering spider which is feeding on a cricket and cricket again they are the number one uh, whatever small vegetables whatever we are growing these crickets will be feeding on that and this ground, ground spider will be chucking the cricket population. This spider is called cyclosa. You can uh, see the unique web structure of this spider and you can see a spider here in the you can just see my cursor there is a spider and the whole line is whatever it has feed on and the debris has been put like this. So it is just uh, saying human please look at me how much I have fed on these are the debris like Angulimala it has just showcasing, showcasing what and all I have fed on. And this spider is called Asimonia which is feeding on mite. This spider is called Hylus which is feeding on uh, bottle fly. The spider called Cheracanthium which is feeding on uh, slug moth caterpillar. This is a slug moth caterpillar which is a voracious uh, feeder. Almost in a night it will uh, completely feed on your plant and that is been the that's uh, moth caterpillar has been controlled by this characanthium spider and you can't even uh, touch this moth it is very much uh, irritant so the that much dangerous moth caterpillar is been fed by characanthium spider and you can see this areovixia spider feeding on uh, blue fly blue bottle fly one two three four uh, flies are being wrapped together and it is feeding on them so as a result till now in my 14 acres there are 250 species of spider documented in 14 acres of land. Other than spider, we have 3000 plus species of plants, 225 species of birds, 1000 species of butterfly, 200 species plus of insects, 5 species, 15 species of snakes and 10 plus species of frogs. So these all are bio indicators and definitely directly or indirectly, it is increasing our yield and increasing our peace in our farm. So conclusion. So eco-friendly or organic farming is the only solution. Spider diversity increases through organic farming, which actually checks the insect population. Monoculture is the biggest threat and need of a farmer must be fulfilled in its form only. Means that means a farmer should not be dependent on outside food and he should grow his own food. Is the These are the main conclusion I like to say here. And uh, acknowledgements, especially to my parents and my father AP Chandrasekhar is the driving force behind our Indra Prastha to my wife and kids and to my Saliga, team Saliga that is there are my friends and to all my friends of Karnataka Spider Club uh, who all are my inspiration again like uh, today's Guru Purnima and all are my gurus I can say to Dr. David Hill. He is an American scientist who has encouraged me uh, for the work in citizen science and especially to Miss Praveena and the entire team of agriculture uh, information team, especially now Madam has called and Dhanalakshmi uh, uh, Madam, most of them, they have been supporting and from two days, uh, they, they are just behind me to and making sure that uh, I will be attending today. So I am thank, thankful to all the uh, uh, complete uh, team of uh, agricultureinformation.com. So thank you. I think, uh, yeah, I have taken exact 30 minutes. As Madam said, I would have rushed because there are many slides I have rushed. So any questions, definitely you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abhijit, for the very interesting presentation. I'll now take up the questions. So the first question is, how to convince farmers that the spiders can help their farming. Yeah, because to convince the farmer, uh, Dr. Abhijit, you could listen to the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, the question I think I have answered in the last uh, few slides. You can convince them by showing them how a sp how spider uh, acts as a biocontroller, how spider actually checks the insect population, and you can just convince by saying how spider feeds on. All those things are the answers for to, to convince them. And mainly you can have to show the result and it is not one, just a spider is an example and we have to observe the nature and uh, again the pesticides will not be the only sole solution. If pesticide would have been the only sole solution, I think many of our agricultural problem would not, should, not been, uh, should not have been existed now. Uh, 
Okay. And uh, move to the next question now. What advice do you have for farmers? What can they do to implement some of the points in your talk? What, what, what? I didn't get to you, madam. I, okay, I'll repeat it. What advice do you have for farmers? What can they do to implement some of the points in your talk? Um, see, the, see, even I am a farmer and uh, advice actually, you can't uh, advise anyone because it's uh, uh, you can say the result, what has happened, I can say, or if anyone interested can directly come to our form and you can see and then you can take and uh, yes, uh, because advice is the, nothing but a, it's a, just like a preaching. If you are convinced only, then you can take it. And uh, uh, when you do a natural farming and organic farming, the convince, the, you will get convinced yourself and uh, no need to say anyone about like this or anything. And uh, so I can't say any advice. There is no spoon feeding like advice. This much you grow, this much you grow because uh, no, because uh, farmer, uh, my has to experiment himself then he has to get uh, himself involved in it and uh, yeah and there are uh, uh, com uh, like your agriculture information science definitely you will be having many advices there and definitely you can look at look at there and one of the thing is the spiders and spiders as i said in my earlier talk it is a best guru and uh, that itself will advise you how i am controlling the pests what what means pest means it is in our sense actually when we consider the pest how it will be controlled, all those things uh, a spider will be showing there. Okay. And next question is, is there a lot of research being done in India on the role of spiders in farming? Uh, unfortunately, if you go on the research state, even the entomology field has not focused on spiders because the, uh, at least the entomology, the agricultural university have considered wasp for some extent, but not spiders. But there are many research papers where the study has been uh, happened. And uh, uh, so even I am the part of, uh, I have done, I am being studying on spiders from past uh, six, seven years. And even I have published some research paper on that. But uh, as far as agricultural university is considered, no, they have not focused on spiders at all. And uh, because uh, though the best tool, it has been neglected. And I think the individual farmers, like who are the participants, everyone can just appreciate the role of spiders just in your backyard, how the spiders are uh, helping uh, humans or helping the nature to thrive. Okay. And next question is soil. What makes spiders special? What makes spiders special? Uh, uh, Dr. Bijit, you could yes. Hello? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, what makes spiders special? I think it's a very big, uh, lengthy question. Again, another uh, yeah, spider. question. Yeah. Uh, I have said to you how the spider is special. I think uh, just in uh, some uh, only for, for today's talk, I am a, uh, selected spider as an uh, water for a water conservation as a soil indicator and as a for a pest management. So three things, uh, three things you can consider uh, for uh, why the spiders are uh, special for me at least. And I think even the listeners would uh, be would appreciate them. Uh, I guess. Okay. And next question is, okay, By, uh, what kind of crops you grow at Indraprastha organic farm in Kalalavadi village? Yeah, we, uh, uh, we grow from, I think there are no major crops as such. Uh, 
from in, even in the 14 acres from coconut arecanet to uh, fruits like to around 300 varieties of fruits we grow and uh, more than 200 varieties of vegetables we grow and there are more than 2000 herbs uh, uh, everything directly or indirectly uh, helping for them uh, helping for us and uh, our main thing is sustainable farming and uh, uh, almost we try to make sure that we will be not buying uh, much uh, from outside so we grow our own food and the excess will be uh, sold through direct marketing where uh, the customers will be coming to our farm and they will be purchasing it or we have some society called prakruti or nesara will be selling through the market there and uh, the major uh, like uh, the commercial uh, crop what we are considering now like coconut and arecanet uh, will be marketed outside that's it okay now we have the last question by profession you are a homeopathic doctor so how you got interested in agriculture and the topic of spiders yeah uh yeah actually by profession i am by education i became a homeopathic doctor but uh, i am born as a farmer and even now i am a farmer farmer even now i practice half a day and uh, uh, rest of the day i will be in my farm engaged in farming with my uh, father and my kids all those things we will be family oriented farming we are be doing so as i am as i am educated through that you know i am do, doing justice for what i have studied and it's an opportunity to serve Uh, who are ill here? Yeah, that is one thing. Yeah, other thing is spiders. Uh, uh, I uh, when I am in the farming, uh, which I am not uh, to uh, in a gadget free or anything to get uh, attracted there. I was just uh, checking for uh, uh, how my how our farm is uh, like this. All those things when I am seeing, uh, first thing which got attracted is birds and butterflies. When I I was uh, keen into that and I was just seeing the behavior or anything. accidentally i got into spiders through a spider called social spider which i showed you in the beginning of the slide so i just started studying the spider and how it is controlling the pests how we, and what are the behavior it is uh, i no need to go anywhere no need to travel anywhere and i don't have time to travel outside too so in my 14 acres i started looking and it is like a world tour for me every day i will not get bored because many thing will be there in say where i am there only Uh, most of the thing occurs and th there is no time to record that too so i just started observing on spiders and i was seeing how it is directly benefiting our form or it directly benefiting to the harmony of nature and how the one when one thing is more and one uh, how another thing control all these cyclic things i started observing and meanwhile uh, the documentation is a human instinct so i start just started documenting them what happening i got a camera all those things so i just started using those tools uh, supportively and uh, uh, yeah i in some extent i agree that all the uh, camera whatever we argue again it's a burden to nature but still if i'm using them uh, slightly uh, for the uh, protection not i can be because it may be arrogant uh, because I, i can't protect anything as such so i just started using supportively for my studies and i started publishing them in journals because now whatever i say here only question has come what any research has occurred anything because if i say that much the, what is the documentation what is the guarantee all those thing question comes because the modern human uh, almost uh, he believes in uh, peer reviewed journals and if it comes to the journals only okay something it is true like that we have been made a thought so i thought okay for our latest understanding let it come to come into the peer reviewed journals so i started publishing whatever my observation in the peer reviewed journal because yeah when one the do i am educated as a doctor but still our education should be strengthy enough that we can focus in many other fields too so i started uh, documenting the observation and uh, started publishing in the journal so this is how my interest uh, started developing and still continuing it thank you okay that's very good to know and okay dr abhijit i don't see any more questions from our participants okay. so now we have come to end of question round on uh, behalf of agriculturinformation.com i like to thank dr abhijit for uh, the detailed presentation and answering all the questions and we also like to thank all the participants for joining this meeting the meeting will now be closed thank you you are most welcome thank you, thank you.